so what was the outcome of the divorce when the dust settled right like when the process was done like what were you left with what was she left with how were you treated how was she treated okay so during the so after like this happens in november so i begged her for six weeks because mm -hmm. we were together for thanksgiving and christmas and she was faking it the whole time not to let the kids know that we were getting a divorce you know, nobody knew mm -hmm. We were sleeping in the same bed, but I was negotiating with her the whole time. I was like, oh, let's, you know, let's go to counseling. Let's do something else. Because neither one of us were cheating. We didn't have mm -hmm. any uh, significant others. And I had no idea the depth that she had already studied this out. And yeah, I always she, tell guys, like, women plan this out well in advance. I mean, three years. You know, you might be hearing this right now and thinking, guys, wow, three years. That's, you know, it's pretty, it's, it's not that uncommon. Mm -hmm. And um, thanks for saying that, uh, Rich. It, it's uh keeping that that perspective so i for up until around christmas and i remember just i couldn't even sleep i couldn't figure out a way to do any a way to bring any new business in because then all the numbers start going through my head it's like i'm a small family construction business if i i know i i talked to my accountant right away and i said hey if i go to half do I have the leverage to go borrow like I used to? He said, no. I said, so that means it's going to severely limit the size and the amount of jobs I can get. He goes, yeah, that's right. Not only are you being set back the money you have, but you're being set back the money you could possibly make. And I'm sweating in bed and I'm, I'm going, well, how do I bring in new business right now? I'm assuming knowing... she didn't care about that though, right? Oh, no. Yeah. And, and in fact, she just... Uh, at one point, we had one empty lot left back up in Oakland. Now, we lived in San Luis Obispo. For people don't know where those are geographically. It's about a four-hour car drive. And Oakland's in the middle of the city, San Francisco. And San Luis Obispo is this beautiful, bucolic coastal town. It's like Oprah Winfrey one day said it's the best place to live in the world, the happiest place in the world to live. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's just gorgeous you know rolling hills it looks like something out of a fairy tale and i um i was having to go back and forth between these two places to to keep up enough income because it was after the 2008 recession just barely keeping ends meet it, keeping ends together and and then and so this was like, yeah, three, four years later after that the economy was just starting to sputter back up. And I negotiated with her for about two months. And then one day I said, hey, you realize if you take all these properties, I'm not going to be able to make a living like I used to. So we should just split the assets. And I put together a package that I thought was fair, where actually she ended up with about 60%. I then ended up with 40%. She would end up with the income properties, and I'd end up with the properties that maybe had a little more equity, that the potential to make more, and we call it even. Mm -hmm. and she was like, oh, no, 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 no. You owe me. I said, but you've been my partner all these years. She goes, no, I don't. I, here's, and here's a big thing. Even though she would work with me and advise me, and which was true, she wasn't on the payroll. She would claim housewife on our taxes. Mm. Okay? That was a big deal. She wasn't architect. And we would hire other architects to sign the... So it was theoretically true. Now, she was huge in... in you know, we would, we would look at a piece of property. Hey, you think we should buy that lot? Yeah, I think so. Okay, then what are we going to put on it? So I think you should put nine apartments on it. Oh, okay. And Why didn't you put her on payroll, though, for tax savings reasons to lower your tax brackets? No, it's, it's the other way around. You get a bigger write-off on a, on a housewife. Oh, okay. In California. Okay. Yeah. Right. And, so uh, state oh, laws oh, incentivize. Part of it is, yeah, but part of it yeah. is that then I think, I think it's, uh, she's not, you know, she did for the first while, but then for the last, the pre then for the next eight, the, the previous eight years, housewife. In the mm. first 10 years, she was on payroll. And you guys were married for more than 10 years, right? Oh, tw yeah, 20. Uh, okay. We were together 22. I call it 22 because from the time I met her, which was just boom, 
all the way through. What's the law in, in California? I think it's after 10 years, you're, 10. you're on the hook you're, for alimony? You're on forever. Forever, yeah. Forever. So she said at that moment, she goes, no, you owe me. And I was like, I owe you. Yeah, she well, was in, we've been she sleeping was in a bargaining in same, position on this one. Oh, yeah. Like, we've been sleeping in the same bed for all this time. We've been, we've been, you know, we go to the same, we do everything together. Mm-hmm. We're in the same room. We're in the same house. We don't, how could I, one person owe another? We've had the same experience. You now let's take the assets and split them and move forward. Mm-hmm. As a, you, you're a smart lady. You know, just, you're a hardcore feminist, you know, and I said, Strong, independent woman, jobs. right? Yeah, strong, independent woman, man. You I don't need no job. man, but I need his money. Baby, yeah, so true. And I was, and she said, well, look, if it's going to be a problem, it may be a, you may have a hard time getting to know your kids. Wow. I was like, oh, fuck. You have to bleep that out. I'm sorry. But, but I was floored. And I had been talking to other guys. I talked to some lawyers. I talked to, you know, people by that time. And they were very clear. They said, look, if those kind of threats start coming up, she's got way bigger plans. And don't get caught. You're going to, you're going to, she wants you in jail. Mm -hmm. And she knew my buttons to push. You know, I had a, I never, I'd never been arrested. I don't have any tickets. I'd never been in jail. I'd never been in, uh, you know, I barely even had a speeding ticket. Um, but I had, you know, I would, I, I'd get mad. I, and when I was a kid, you know, you talk about fighting and stuff. When we were in high school, I'd fight. Mm-hmm. But I never hit anybody after that. But she had this, I realized then, she had this dialogue that somehow I was scary. Later, it would come up in depositions. She kept claiming I, she was scared and I was scary. Did this lead and, up to a false DV? Yeah. Okay, so those of you that don't know what a false DV is, and I talk about it in my book in the chapter on why smart men don't marry. Did you read my book, by the way? I did. Yeah. I just got done with it. Yeah, go ahead. Would you, would you uh, co-sign that chapter? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> So I, mean, I I was sitting there. I had to like stop the car and sit there and listen. You're just like, nodding your head, going, "Yeah, yeah. there it is." Uh, yeah, and so, I've heard it. I've studied enough about this. I've heard it in other places, yeah. but you 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 portray it perfectly. So go for it, dude. You wrote it, man. Let's so it. women use this as a trump card often. Um, terrible women. So let me just be clear on that, because it doesn't require any proof. And what they'll so. I'll tell you a story. So this one guy was telling me that, you know, he had come home from work. He's expecting to see his, you know, his family and his kids. And as he walks in the front door, um, his wife is basically on the phone with the police saying, we're really scared. You know, he's threatening to hurt us. He has guns and all this sort of stuff. And it's like 15 minutes later, two cruisers rip down the street. One of them parks on his front lawn, tearing up like shrubs and stuff. And the other one in the driveway, sirens going, and he basically gets hauled away in handcuffs. Um, they change the lock locks on the house and he doesn't have access to the house. His kids, when the house sells nothing because she claimed he was a bad, scary man. He was a boogeyman and bad things, you know, were happening. Um, they don't require any proof. It's just the allegation is plenty in most places in the world. Um, Wayne went through that. So what happened with the false DV charge? Like, what did she do? So here's how it went down. I realized when she said that, that I was like, now wait a minute. Those are not her normal words because I've been living with this person for 22 years. So I'm very aware of when she's saying something threatening because I've Mm -hmm. seen her deal with a lot of people. She, She handled a lot of our legal work or at least set the strategy for our, if we had issues or whatever, you know, for, with, as you do in business, just in business. And very crafty, very clever. And by the way, she came from a family, very broken family, where her father destroyed her mother in divorce in the late 70s in California. Mm-hmm. So her mother went from being the happy housewife, like leave it to beaver, to having to become an oncology nurse, changing bedpans in the middle of the night over a two year period. And she was 17 at the time mm-hmm. when this happened. Her dad was the uh, CEO 
of a Fortune 500 company known as Western Microwave. And they make bombs for the military. So now consider a man's you know, state of mind, a guy who last year your bomb killed 400 people at a whack. Got to do better this year. You got to kill 500. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, to, to, to continue to keep him peeking at this, he would read books. His, his standard fare that he would talk about was the art of war. And his daughters, he had three daughters. I married one of them. This is what they would talk around, about around the coffee table. And I didn't know anything about this. I was a deer in woods, man. I, I grew up just being a simple damn builder guy, and I wanted to surf and sail and have a good time. Yeah, you're a surfing hippie, right? <laughs> yeah, I was. And, oh, when you see my video, if you look at my video on Vitruvian built, you're going to see a guy who looks nothing like me now. Mm -hmm. I even look older then. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to get hopefully get to that. Okay. So, all right, so... She, when she started talking about this, about me not seeing the kids, I was like, this is a huge red flag. Mm -hmm. Now, I have, it's been three months now. I have, you didn't know why at the time, but like the spidey senses were tingling, like, hang yeah. on, what's coming down the pipes here? And I said, hang on a second. The kids weren't home. I walked in the house. I packed a bag. I came back out. I got in the car and I left. Okay. We, uh, and, and, and I, and a month before I'd even asked her, cause as soon as, as soon as she told me about this divorce thing, weird mail starts showing up. I mean, like within the next couple of days, she started signing up for like singles, not singles dating stuff, but things that, that women who are single would get in the mail, like, you know, special bank accounts and, mm -hmm. you know, plus tax strategy planning and, and uh, these things that we would never look at if we were a married couple. And I started noticing this mail. I said, wait a minute, you had to plan this for a while. Mm -hmm. Like, this didn't just happen yesterday. Yeah, you got to hit the road running, right? I mean, there's only yeah, so much yeah. sand left in the hourglass. You know, she's only got to look <laughs> for so long. Yeah. Oh, oh and then it was soon as, even during the divorce process, man, she went out, she got full work over from forehead to, to pussy. Just the whole thing worked over. I saw her later in court. Her face a little bit deformed. She landed herself a wealthy guy now. It's another story, but, but she worked it hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it spent some money there. And she's a good looking lady too. She always was. And she never mm -hmm. lost it really. So, but I, at one point I was like, I said, we, we haven't touched each other in months. I go, what are we doing? I go, are we dating others? I mean, do you, you go out all the time and I'm separate? She goes, I don't care what you do. I said, really? She goes, yeah. She goes, I don't give a shit. Said, We're done. We're now, we, we just have to exercise this out as efficiently as we can to retain as much of the wealth as we can and not fuck this up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. So I didn't start dating, but I was like, in my mind, I was like, oh, okay. So we're done. Just, we can date others. And um, so I left and there was a woman who I knew and I called her up, asked her for a ride from where I flew to in the airport. I really just wanted to get away. And she picked me up and I'd never touched her before. And I asked her, I said, can we hang out? Like, mm -hmm. You know, she's a single woman. She's like, yeah, for sure. So we started hanging out. We had a good time. And, and she knew I was just coming out of this divorce. And, and, and uh, well, my ex ended up having a guy follow us, take pictures. Mm -hmm. And she gave that to my kids later. Mm -hmm. nice Even lady. after. Nice. Yeah. To juice so, them up yeah. a little more. Yeah. So anyway, that happened. But So what happened after, with the DV charge? Okay, so DV. So, okay. So yeah. I'm out of the house. She puts a big pile of shit in a, uh, she puts it in my hanger, my airplane hanger. She, mm -hmm. she purges everything out of the house that she thinks is mine, which is just my clothes, some skis, some sports gear. And she dumps it in the hanger. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at all the stuff. I'm like, okay. And there was a pair of my daughter's skis in there. So one day I drove by the house. I was going to put the skis, not even on the property, but at the front uh, mailbox. Well, she happened to be out there. And I live on this big estate, 10 acres out in the country. Mm -hmm. The kids were kind of up the driveway. And I said, here, I ended up with these. These are Madison, mm -hmm. she says. Maddie was 18 by this time. We're just turning 18. And she says, 
you're not, you know, get the hell out of here. I don't want to see you and yelling at me. And I yelled at her back and just had words. Mm-hmm. I never, I didn't even step on the property. I was mm-hmm. on the street and I got in the car and I was huff, in a huff and I was pissed off and I drove away. She went to the judge the next day and said, he came at me and I was scared to death and boom, restraining order. Mm. Now I can't be near my kids. I can't be near the house. I can't now. And then, and then was finally, we got to the first day of the hearing. Okay. So now, now she wants to ask for a decisional hearing by the judge. I don't know what you call it exactly, but so we end up in front of the judge and I have a lawyer by this time. And she walks in and makes, takes, spends about three hours on the stand telling the judge why she should have 100% management control of the company that we've had together for 22 years. And I was just sitting there like shell-shocked. I was listening to her. Did you ever tell- think for a minute that, that he would give it to her? Or were you like, ah, oh, this isn't going to happen. Just let her, you know, No fucking way. Yeah. No way. I kept looking at my lawyer like, what? Now, it came to half time, And she threw all kinds of allegations out at me. And she even said, oh, by the way, if I get control of this company, I have every qualification to run it. I am, you know, I have a degree in architecture and I've been his partner for 22 years. And I, I, you know, I used to be pound nails and I know how to order the concrete of the truck. And blah, blah, by blah, the way, blah. Yeah. Uh, I have three guys who have agreed to put their license up if he leaves and he, she named him. Mm-hmm. And one of the guys, I mean, I knew of all three of them, um, and one was a friend of her dad. Another guy was just some random dude. And another guy was a friend of like the family. And, um, and I just sat there and I was like, really? Those guys could do my job? I mean, I, I, by this time, I'd even gotten a patent. And I've gotten, I, was start, I was lecturing on the college level about um, building technology. I'm, I would consider it a building technology. So that's the name they mm-hmm. did. So I would talk to architecture students and uh, engineering students and i would talk to uh green um um you know uh he call uh, what's the word in college um but the greenies and so uh i had you know i was and i was like really this is all going to replace me mm-hmm. i was like okay and then i went to lunch they broke for lunch and i called my accountant and i can he had just been through a gnarly divorce that took him four years and he had finished his and he was my partner for 25 years because mm-hmm. we owned a lot of um, income properties together. We had, I, I, another part of what I did is I had uh, put together syndications and raised money and we uh, bought apartment buildings all over California. It was very successful. We did really well with that. And so my accountant was my partner in that. And I told him, I said, hey, this is what's going on. He goes, well, don't worry. This is just D-Day. It's going to get better from here. And, and um, I said, well, do I even want this company? And he was like, well, just go in there and give it your best shot. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So I go back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I go back. In the, I said, look, Your Honor. So you march back know, in the slaughterhouse. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I was like, and my and my lawyer actually looked at me and said the same thing. He goes, because you know, I don't really know you that well because we're just starting this process. Like I maybe known him a couple of weeks, mm-hmm. and he'd seen my numbers. I thought it was just going to be a matter of just like saying, okay, here's the here's the asset, mm-hmm. who gets what, and let's go from there. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought it was going to be. Uh uh-uh. uh <laughs> She turns it into she wants full management control, and I was like, well, how is that going to work? And so I told the judge, I said, look, Your Honor. I don't understand how this can even be a thing because we've been partners for 22 years and we've made every decision together. And now we're going to be at odds with each other. And one guy's going to tell the other guy what to do. Mm-hmm. I go, that sounds like a recipe for disaster. So, so he hands you know, over control. Within two days, he writes a letter says she's got all control. So, so then first thing, she- so she's got the kids. She's got yep. the assets. She's got the house, which you've moved out of. Now she's got the business. Yep. And so now I was in the middle of building out a handful of projects, which I really wanted to finish. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I uh, actually, one of the houses was for a guy named Dr. Cherry. And he, and now, okay, I'm going to take you back 10 years. And this is kind of interesting, especially for a lot of guys uh, in America and California. Around the 10 year mark of marriage, she and I were arguing a lot Mm -hmm. about where we should live. She wanted to stay in the city. She wanted to be the cool city girl. And I wanted to. Do you think that's a coincidence that at the 10 year mark where she knows that you're on the hook for lifelong alimony, that she became a little more disagreeable? Oh, it's no question. She knew what she had. I knew what she had. I, okay. I'm, I'm no dummy. You know, I, I, I knew it was a stake, but, you know, we had a great life. We even we were living in Oakland. We, you know, we're, we were I, I wasn't super rich, but I did good, you know, and I wake up every morning and have jobs to do and very well respected. And we were help build the little elementary school in our town and yeah, yeah, okay. all the good stuff, you know, and kids all running around all the time and. And, um, so, oh, I kind of lost my train of thought. We were, um, you were, you were talking about 10 years back with this guy that you had to build oh, a yeah, house yeah, okay. for. So, so because we're arguing, she wants to go see a shrink, mm-hmm. go couples counsel. Mm-hmm. Okay. So mm-hmm. we go and turns in, she, she convinces them that I have the problem. And I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm not laughing at you. I'm just, it's just like, see, I was right again, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I have the problem. I have the problem because I'm angry because yeah. I was like, look, we got 10 million bucks. How much more could we, you know, just, just put that in a freaking simple 6% thing or mm-hmm. even 10 or we don't have to put in anything. We own properties. I mean, mm-hmm. they're spitting out cash and it's like we can. We don't need to have a second and third house if we just have our one house and I'm there all the time. And I always was going to put my moniker of success to myself was that I get to see my house in the daytime Mm -hmm. because I work from before sunrise to after sunset. Every morning I'd wake up at six. I'd I'd be the first one down at the the lumber yard and make sure everybody's going to have enough material to do what they need to do. And then when I come home at night and once in a while we had a little fun at sneak home because i live very close to all my jobs you know get a little nookie in the afternoon that was fun mm-hmm. it was great you know and and uh and then we get to go um on three-day vacations to the mountain house and once in a while we take off a few weeks and go to things it was great you know it's like but but at 10 years i was like how much more do we need Mm-hmm. And let's do some different things. Let's go explore the world. I haven't, I haven't seen the rest of the world. I haven't seen Europe. And I want to do this when my kids are small. Mm-hmm. And that's when the resistance started. And I was like, what is going on? So she's oh, we got to, you, you're not happy. You, we got to go see a shrink. So we went together. Mm-hmm. And then after a while, she was like, you know, I'm just frustrated trying to explain to this guy and to her why we should do this now. And I probably wasn't the best communicator whatever they convinced me i should go on prozac because, oh they put you on antidepressants eh? yeah and i did not want them i was like i'm not depressed yeah. i'm pissed yeah. <laughs> I, did. I did i, I just I, did. I just want to go on a sailboat from time to time man that's my medicine i don't need these pills well yeah well i wanted to park all the jobs we have and yeah. take the kids and, and introduce them oh, to got the, it, man. the world yeah, totally but but yeah. instead you got put on like antidepressants right because you're you know yeah like, you know, imagine that you're married, you know, you've done the right thing your entire life. You've raised a family, you've built a business, you're loaded, you've got a plane, you've got multiple houses, you've got vacation houses, and it's like, you just want to sail a boat, and, and you go to a therapist, and the guy's like, here, take these pills and shut up. Dude, I wasn't even asking for life. I was yeah. asking for a year. Yeah. One year. I said, let's just, let's just go for a fucking yeah, okay. year. 